The key is to surround yourself only with individuals who elevate you, whose company enhances your best qualities. False relationships can be deceptive, much like mistaking a mirage for an oasis in the vast landscape of human interactions. In a world replete with encounters and mismatches, where masks of politeness and self-interest are expertly donned, it is a true art to discern who genuinely cares for us. This requires not only intuition, but also keen observation. Often we might place too much faith in the goodness and goodwill of others, only to realize that we are being exploited. Similar to a skilled gardener who knows how to distinguish between plants that enrich the soil and those that deplete it, we too must identify the true supporters in our lives and recognize the emotional leeches. Hence, we will explore subtle indicators and hidden patterns that unveil the real motives behind insincere smiles and hollow promises. If you're here, it's because you're interested in personal growth. In this session, we'll delve into understanding these human puzzles, shining a light on the journey towards more genuine and fulfilling relationships. Before we begin, I would like to ask you to make sure to watch this video until the end, as every part is crucial. Stay strong and focused, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Number 1. Persistent Lack of Respect This behavior is not just an occasional mistake or a spontaneous misstep made in a moment of pressure. It is a constant pattern that becomes integral to the relationship's nature, manifesting in various ways. It may surface as demeaning remarks, indifferent behaviors, or outright neglect of one's emotions and boundaries. This conduct can be subtle, resembling numerous minor offenses or explicit, like a conspicuous injury to one's dignity. Picture a garden where respect is essential for the nourishment of relationships. Without it, all that remains is a desolate landscape where no healthy growth is possible. In this environment, every effort to communicate or connect is hindered by the sharp bristles of scorn and indifference. The individual showing this disrespect may use it, whether intentionally or not, as a means to dominate or manipulate within the relationship, thereby eroding any semblance of equality or mutual respect. Such ongoing disrespect shakes the very core of the relationship. When conflicts arise, rather than resolving them with compassion and understanding, they turn into fierce confrontations with little concern for the emotional fallout. The natural give and take of relationship dynamics is disrupted, making recovery to a normal, respectful state challenging, if not impossible. Recognizing this pattern of enduring disrespect is crucial. It requires seeing past individual incidents to recognize a continuous behavior pattern. It's important to understand that respect isn't solely about significant acts. It is evident in everyday interactions, small acknowledgements, and how disagreements are managed. In summary, a continual absence of respect in a relationship signals that one is viewed not as an equal partner, but as a subordinate, undermining the emotional and dignitary balance of the partnership. Identifying this behavior is essential for anyone who values their self-respect and desires a relationship grounded in reciprocal respect and equality. Number 2. Superficial Closeness This notion can be described as superficial closeness, similar to the glistening surface of a lake that appears deep but reveals shallowness upon closer examination. In such interactions, Individuals may imitate the actions of a close friend or devoted partner. They engage in regular conversations, share laughter, and participate in seemingly deep discussions. Yet, this appearance of closeness fails to evolve into genuine depth. The reality of their commitment, or lack thereof, 
becomes apparent in various ways. For instance, they may eagerly reap the benefits of the relationship, but quickly withdraw when it demands effort or sacrifice. When support is needed, their assistance tends to be weak or entirely absent. They often show up for happy occasions, but are notably missing during tough times or when vulnerability is required. Moreover, this type of closeness usually lacks the fundamental elements of trust and dependability that anchor true relationships. Plans are frequently made and just as easily discarded. Promises are extended but rarely fulfilled. Their involvement in the relationship is typically self-serving, dictated by convenience and personal gain. This approach is essentially a strategy to keep a network of contacts available for use without the emotional investment genuine relationships demand. It's a tactic of maintaining people at a beneficial distance without allowing the closeness to require mutual commitment, akin to emotional hedging, enjoying the perks of connection without the risks of true attachment or accountability. Identifying superficial closeness is key to understanding the dynamics within a relationship. It involves scrutinizing interaction patterns and assessing whether the perceived intimacy is substantiated by acts of true commitment and mutual vulnerability. It's crucial to discern if the relationship is evenly balanced in emotional investment or if it's skewed towards benefiting one party. Characterized by a veneer of intimacy without the substance of true commitment and mutual growth, Recognizing this pattern is essential for pursuing and cultivating relationships founded on authenticity, reciprocity, and deep emotional connection. Number 3. Lack of personal interest. Imagine a conversation as a bustling two-way street, alive with the flow of thoughts, experiences, and emotions. In a thriving relationship, this street facilitates an active exchange of mutual interest and care. However, when interacting with someone who sees you merely as a tool for their ends, this street narrows into a one-way lane. Their narratives and experiences dominate, while any attempt to shift the focus to your life hits detours or dead ends. This disinterest shows up in conversations that feel more like solo performances under the guise of dialogues. These individuals immerse themselves in the details of their daily lives, their challenges, and their successes, expecting your undivided attention and empathy. Yet, when it's your turn to share, their interest quickly fades. They might offer half-hearted nods, switch topics suddenly, or display overt disinterest or impatience. Your concerns and experiences, regardless of their importance, seem to barely make a blip on their radar, this isn't just poor social skills or a lack of conversational tact. It's a clear reflection of their priorities and intentions. By monopolizing conversations and neglecting your stories, they create a dynamic where their needs, opinions and life are paramount. This is a subtle form of self-centeredness where the relationship orbits around them, relegating you to the role of an audience or sounding board. Such interactions can be deeply disheartening, leading to feelings of being undervalued and frustrated as your fundamental need for recognition and understanding is ignored. Over time, this one-sidedness can undermine the very foundation of the relationship, reducing your role to that of an accessory rather than an equal partner. Recognizing this lack of personal interest is essential. It involves being mindful of your interaction dynamics and acknowledging the emotional toll these one-sided conversations take on you. This awareness is crucial for assessing whether the relationship is mutually beneficial or merely draining. Identifying this imbalance is the first step towards seeking relationships that are truly reciprocal and fulfilling, where your stories and experiences are as valued and respected as theirs. Number 4. Making you feel guilty. Imagine guilt as a puppeteer's string, deftly manipulating the benevolent conscience, leading them along paths they would not choose independently. 
The manipulator in this scenario is skilled at pulling these strings, cleverly tapping into your sense of responsibility, empathy, or fairness. They might craft requests in such a way that declining them makes you appear uncaring or selfish. Alternatively, they could invoke memories of past favors or incidents, suggesting an unspoken debt that you are now obliged to repay. This technique of inducing guilt is often subtle and insidious, beginning with minor favors or concessions and gradually escalating to more significant demands. As this progresses, your personal boundaries erode and your ability to refuse weakens, trapping you in a cycle of guilt and compliance. Consequently, the other person's needs and desires become the focal point, while your own are marginalized or completely ignored. The effectiveness of this tactic stems from its ability to leverage a fundamental aspect of human nature, the desire to be seen as good, helpful and caring. By making you feel guilty, the manipulator warps these virtues into tools of control. You might find yourself acting not out of genuine desire or mutual respect, but from a sense of imposed obligation, often accompanied by feelings of resentment or exhaustion. Recognizing when someone is using guilt to manipulate you is critical for preserving your personal boundaries and emotional health. It requires an awareness of the emotional currents in your interactions, distinguishing between legitimate requests for assistance and attempts to exploit your goodwill. It also demands the courage to question the motivations behind these requests and to assert your right to decline without feeling guilty. Identifying and confronting this manipulative behavior is essential for nurturing healthier relationships that are based on mutual respect, genuine care, and free choice, rather than obligation and guilt. Number five, selective availability. You are available, they are not. Selective availability in this context illustrates a starkly one-sided relationship resembling a phone line where only one party is always on call. In this dynamic, you are perpetually prepared to listen, help, or provide support. Your time, emotions, and resources are constantly open and accessible to them. In stark contrast, the other person's availability is as rare and unpredictable as a comet streaking across the night sky, occasional and strictly on their terms. This difference in availability is not just a result of busy schedules or conflicting priorities, but a calculated choice and strategic posture by the other party. Their sporadic presence serves dual purposes. It maintains a convenient distance for them and establishes a control dynamic. By limiting their availability, they set up a relationship where you often find yourself grateful for any small amount of time or attention they deign to offer. In such relationships, your attempts to connect or engage are frequently met with excuses, delays or outright neglect. Your messages may remain unanswered, your calls unreturned, and your needs unrecognized. When they do choose to engage, it's typically only when it aligns with their needs or agenda, transforming the relationship into a one-way street where you are more of a convenience than a valued partner. The emotional impact of this pattern can be profound. It fosters feelings of inadequacy as you begin to doubt the value of your contributions and your worth in the other person's eyes. It also generates an undercurrent of frustration and resentment, stemming from the realization that your efforts and readiness are not reciprocated. Recognizing the pattern of selective availability is crucial. It requires you to step back and objectively evaluate the balance of effort and availability in the relationship. Understanding that healthy relationships are founded on mutual respect, effort and presence is essential in addressing and correcting this imbalance, aiming for a more reciprocal and fulfilling partnership. Number 6. Gossip and Breach of Trust Discussion and betrayal can be seen as a dual threat. 
On one side, chatting about others creates a deceptive sense of unity and confidence. It seems as though they are sharing secrets with you, pulling you into an apparently tight-knit circle of confidence. On the flip side, the scenario becomes significantly more grim. It includes the deception of your confidence when the private or sensitive details you divulged in trust turn into material for their discussions with others. This deception isn't merely a breach of confidence, it is a deliberate tactic to diminish your feeling of safety and privacy within the bond. This behavior exhibits a deliberate neglect for the privacy of personal data and an outright defiance of privacy limits. The perpetrator uses chatter as a mechanism for social maneuvering, often positioning themselves at the center of knowledge by spreading and distorting facts. They aim to alter perceptions, forge alliances, or even stir conflict, all to their advantage. This approach shows a pragmatic use of interpersonal connections, where individuals are viewed as tools for achieving goals, and confidential information is treated as a commodity to be exchanged. The consequences of such actions on the affected party are diverse. It creates a climate of doubt and vulnerability, eroding the base of what might have been a supportive and secure relationship. It can result in social and emotional harm, as the misuse of private details can tarnish reputations, relationships and self-worth. Recognizing this behavior is essential to protect oneself from these relational predators. It involves being alert to how they talk about others when they are not present and being wary of what information you disclose to them. Observing their adherence to privacy and their tendency to partake in rumor spreading can offer crucial insights into their personality and motives. Identifying and addressing this behavior is crucial for preserving one's respect and ensuring that personal boundaries are honored in all connections. Number seven, lack of reciprocity. Picture a teeter-totter where one side is heavily burdened with the weight of endeavors, sacrifices, and commitments, while the other side is strikingly light, lacking comparable contributions. This scenario aptly illustrates a relationship deficient in reciprocity. In such partnerships, you find yourself consistently devoting time, energy and emotions, working to develop and maintain the connection. In contrast, the contributions from the other individual are minimal, often merely symbolic or completely missing. This imbalance in effort may appear in various forms. It could be that you are always the one initiating conversations and arranging meetings, while their responses are tepid or non-committal. You might continually provide support and understanding, yet receive neither equivalent empathy nor help when it's your turn to need it. Even in the sharing of personal experiences and vulnerabilities, you may be open and candid, whereas they remain reserved or uninterested. The root of this unilateral engagement often lies in a self-focused approach to relationships. For the person in question, the relationship serves as a convenience, a resource to be utilized as needed, without the intent of meaningful reciprocation. Their involvement is strategic, dependent solely on their own gains, neglecting the needs and feelings of the other party. This is in stark contrast to the nature of healthy relationships which flourish on mutual reciprocation, shared experiences, and an equitable investment in emotional labor. Identifying the absence of reciprocity requires careful observation of the relationship dynamics. It involves questioning whether the efforts to nurture and expand the relationship are shared equally or disproportionately borne by you. It necessitates a frank evaluation of whether the relationship feels rewarding or exhausting, balanced or uneven. Number eight, absence in critical moments. This behavioral pattern resembles a tree that offers shade only when the sun is mild, but disappears when storm clouds approach. In favorable times, when everything goes smoothly, they are present, 
enjoying the collective benefits and perhaps benefiting from the relationship. However, when difficulties arise and support is crucial, their presence fades, leaving you to face the adversity alone. Such individuals view relationships as convenient, merely a tool for achieving their goals, where their engagement is measured by personal advantage. Their support is shallow, given only when it suits their needs or when there's something to gain. During critical moments, whether it's a personal crisis, professional setback or emotional distress, their absence is conspicuous. It is in these times when real support and empathy are most needed that their true priorities and their lack of commitment to the bond become glaringly evident. The effect of this behavior on the person who feels abandoned is significant. It creates a feeling of betrayal and disappointment, eroding the trust and dependability once believed to be integral to the relationship. It prompts questions about the nature of the connection and often leads to reconsidering the individual's role and importance in one's life. Recognizing this pattern is crucial for understanding the nature of the relationship and the other person's real intentions. It involves realizing that consistent support, both in moments of happiness and in times of difficulty, is fundamental to any meaningful connection. The recognition that someone is missing during pivotal moments acts as a decisive test, helping to differentiate between those who are truly committed to your well-being and those who participate in the relationship solely for their benefit. Number 9. Constant Competition Imagine a chess game where every move is crafted not merely to enhance one's own standing, but also to systematically weaken the adversary. Similarly, a person who aims to exploit you might often treat your relationship as a tactical contest. Each of your accomplishments, decisions or even challenges turns into a chance for them to demonstrate dominance. Whether it involves overshadowing your professional achievements, surpassing your personal milestones or subtly detracting from your choices, their motives are fueled by a desire to maintain superiority in this self-established rivalry. This perpetual competition manifests in various contexts. In professional environments, they may try to eclipse you during meetings or claim your ideas as their own. In personal interactions, they might minimize your experiences or successes, always positioning theirs as more noteworthy even in casual discussions, there's an evident attempt by them to show they are better, smarter or more successful. The origin of this behavior stems from a profound insecurity and a distorted sense of self-value, where their worth is gauged not by their achievements, but by their ability to surpass others. This attitude transforms every exchange into a winner-takes-all scenario, where their victory necessitates your loss creating a setting where cooperative growth is overshadowed by the drive to excel and overshadow. Dealing with someone who engages in constant competition can be draining. It fosters an atmosphere of continuous strife, substituting real cooperation and support with rivalry. Your triumphs are not rejoiced, but seen as threats to their supremacy. Your difficulties are not met with sympathy but viewed as openings for them to secure an advantage. Recognizing and understanding this pattern is vital. It aids in establishing limits and readjusting the relationship, ideally towards a healthier, more cooperative dynamic. It requires acknowledging that the core of any constructive interaction should be mutual respect and assistance, not an unending contest for dominance. Number 10. Lack of genuine support. Picture a tree in a dense forest. Ideally, it receives support from surrounding vegetation, gaining nutrients, shelter, and the company of a thriving natural community. Now visualize a tree isolated in a desolate area, devoid of other plants to provide backing or defense. This mirrors being in a relationship with someone who does not truly care about your welfare. 
You find yourself alone, unsupported, your limbs extending in search of companionship that fails to materialize. In such connections, your aspirations, initiatives, and obstacles encounter indifference or superficial support. This individual might verbally acknowledge your endeavors, wish you lukewarm success, or claim to be supportive, yet their actions or the absence of them resonate more profoundly. When real help, insightful advice, or a sympathetic ear is needed during difficult periods, their involvement is notably lacking. Their assistance, if offered, is often cursory, lacking depth and disappearing precisely when most required. The underlying cause of this absence of sincere support stems from their self-centeredness. Your triumphs or failures, your struggles or concerns, hold their interest only insofar as they impact their own objectives or benefits. They regard relationships as transactional affairs, with emotional contributions evaluated on the basis of personal gains. This perspective results in a lopsided dynamic where one side consistently contributes, be it effort, affection or resources, while the other side extracts, often leaving the contributor feeling underappreciated and invisible. Acknowledging this absence of genuine support is essential in comprehending the dynamics of your relationship with such a person. It necessitates a truthful evaluation of the give and take in your interactions. Identifying and addressing this shortfall is crucial to ensure that you devote your time and energy to relationships that are enriching, mutual and truly supportive. Number 11. Emotional Manipulation it often begins subtly, with the manipulator initially appearing caring and attentive. However, this pretense soon evolves into a tool for provoking feelings of worry, inadequacy or remorse in their victim. They become skilled at manipulating emotions, offering praise to lift you up when it benefits them, then quickly resorting to sharp critiques or sabotage to foster self-doubt and reliance. Consider the comparison of a gardener and a fragile plant. A nurturing gardener supplies just the right amount of water and sunlight, whereas an emotional manipulator, akin to a careless gardener, fluctuates between excessive watering and neglecting the plant during dry spells. They manipulate emotional extremes to destabilize, creating a setting where the victim becomes emotionally reliant continually seeking the manipulator's affirmation and acceptance to recapture that initial feeling of care. This type of manipulation often targets the essence of an individual's emotional health. They may downplay your achievements or exaggerate your shortcomings to maintain a constant state of uncertainty. They could twist circumstances to induce guilt for ordinary behaviors, shifting fault so that you consistently feel compelled to apologize. In environments where emotional manipulation prevails, the power dynamic is consistently uneven. The manipulator dictates the terms, choosing when to provide or withhold affection, thus keeping their victim unsteady. This relationship dynamic is not geared towards mutual enrichment or support, but rather serves the manipulator's needs at the detriment of the other's emotional well-being. Detecting emotional manipulation necessitates acute awareness of these patterns. It requires identifying the recurrent modes of interaction where one's emotions are deliberately manipulated. It demands self-reflection to gauge how these exchanges impact one's personal and emotional stability. Number 12. Disregard for your feelings. This pattern of behavior, where one's emotional state is consistently disregarded or belittled, is comparable to cultivating a garden in which only one plant is permitted to flourish while the rest are overlooked. In these interactions, the user's needs and desires are elevated, whereas yours are marginalized or ignored. Their behaviors and utterances act as the pruning tools that reduce your emotional health leaving you feeling diminished and invisible within the relationship. This neglect can take many forms, 
It may be apparent in how they habitually ignore your emotional necessities, lacking empathy or support when you are exposed or in distress. It may manifest in their apathy towards your perspectives and decisions, where your input is overwhelmed by their assertive narrative. They might fail to recognize your successes or, worse, trivialize your challenges, trivializing matters that are significant to you. This conduct is not just inconsiderate, it's a deliberate oversight, a strategy employed to gain dominance in the relationship. By dismissing your emotions and needs, the user constructs an environment that degrades your self-worth, thus rendering you more vulnerable to their sway and authority. This kind of emotional manipulation, though subtly wrought, has a profound effect. This dynamic is especially harmful as it targets the essence of one's emotional health, the fundamental human requirements to be acknowledged, understood and appreciated. When these needs are consistently neglected, it can lead to diminished self-regard and a sense of loneliness, even within an active relationship. To navigate these circumstances, identifying signs of emotional neglect is crucial. Such awareness acts as a light, guiding you away from relationships that jeopardize your emotional health and towards those built on mutual respect, care and reciprocal support. Number 13. Unilateral Benefit This dynamic can appear in various aspects of a relationship, whether it's financial, emotional or practical. Financially, the user might often take money or resources promising to return or reciprocate the favors, which then fail to materialize. Emotionally, they may depend excessively on their partner for affirmation, support and attention, yet reciprocate minimally, if at all, when the situation is reversed. Practically, they might frequently request help, favors or time, but remain notably unavailable or too occupied to reciprocate when needed. This imbalance resembles a parasitic relationship in nature where one entity profits at the detriment of another. The user, akin to a parasite, extracts nourishment, in this case emotional, financial or practical aid, without providing a fair or substantial return to their partner's well-being. Over time, this lack of balance can exhaust the provider's resources, whether they be emotional, financial or time-based, leaving them depleted and unsatisfied. The reasons behind this one-sided benefit often stem from profound self-interest and an absence of empathy. The user perceives relationships as transactional, evaluating exchanges solely by what they gain, disregarding their contributions. This approach to relationships is inherently defective as it ignores the essential values of mutual respect, support and reciprocity. Spotting this pattern necessitates a keen awareness. It involves noticing the ongoing absence of reciprocity and the sensation of consistently being at a disadvantage in the relationship. It demands a truthful evaluation of whether the interactions leave you feeling appreciated and respected or exploited and diminished. Number 14. Diminishing or disdainful comments. Individuals who consistently exploit others for their own advancement are skilled at using dismissive remarks to undermine their target's self-esteem, confidence and self-worth. These comments, often disguised as jokes or casual conversation, are actually sharp barbs meant to degrade rather than encourage. They might belittle your accomplishments, mock your goals, or seem indifferent and unengaged with your difficulties and setbacks. This conduct amounts to a form of subtle psychological warfare, deliberately devaluing your achievements and ambitions to create an imbalance in the relationship. This strategy is designed to keep you in a state of self-doubt and reduced self-esteem, thereby making you more vulnerable to their manipulation and dominance. In their perspective, your lowered sense of worth boosts their own status, reinforcing their control within the relationship. Moreover, 
Such scornful comments frequently mirror their own hidden insecurities and sense of inadequacy. By demeaning others, they aim to conceal their vulnerabilities and display an image of superiority. This pattern is a clear indicator of their incapacity to participate in supportive, balanced and reciprocal relationships. Recognizing and understanding this behavior is essential. It allows you to penetrate the superficial allure that such individuals often project and to comprehend the toxic dynamics at play in the relationship. It acts as a signal to either confront the issue directly with the individual by establishing firm boundaries or to remove oneself from such a detrimental setting. Number 15. Failure to fulfill promises. This behavior of committing to and then not honoring promises is akin to a stage play where dialogue is central but the corresponding actions are overlooked. These individuals are proficient in the art of verbal charm, crafting elaborate promises of commitment and support. Yet their promises lack tangible fulfillment. They set expectations with the finesse of an artist, but when it's time to materialize these vibrant promises, they falter, exposing the hollowness of their commitments. In such relationships, a recurring pattern develops. At critical moments when their assurance is expected to materialize, these individuals often disappear, leaving behind a gap filled with disappointment and disenchantment. This absence when support is crucial isn't merely a failure to keep a promise. It starkly reveals their real intentions. Their commitments serve as instruments for personal advantage, meant to elicit trust or aid without a plan to reciprocate. Thus, the inability to fulfill promises acts as a critical test, separating those who genuinely engage in relationships with mutual respect and support from those who view relationships as means for self-benefit. For those disappointed, such experiences impart a harsh but necessary lesson that not all commitments rest on a base of sincerity and principle. Therefore, Observing this failure to keep promises is crucial in understanding and identifying individuals who might exploit others. This behavior is more revealing than the most articulate words, exposing a person's true nature and motives. By recognizing this pattern, one can more adeptly navigate the complexities of human interactions, protect their trust and safeguard their emotional investments. I hope you enjoyed the video. And since you've made it to the end, please share your thoughts with us in the comments. If you're new here, please subscribing to the channel. See you soon.